I wanted to record this video giving my thoughts on the building debate that's going on right now. I know that as of this recording today, we're supposed to get building back sometime today in public matches. And it's fun! I love Fortnite with no building. I, I think it's great. It's taking Fortnite and flipping it on its head. But my question is, for the people that want that to be permanent, how sustainable is that? Does Fortnite have enough interesting and intrinsic qualities to separate itself from other VRs if you take away the thing that made Fortnite Fortnite? As of today, we hear that, that there's a, now a no, a non-building mode, that it's gonna be potentially permanent and separate from the main VR. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is kind of a concern because what I'm worried about this doing, and Cypher talked about this in one of his videos recently, but what I'm concerned about is it's splitting the community. I have a feeling Fortnite at some point in time in the future is going to have to choose because now you gotta think of it this way. Now your player base is split. All the people that would have normally played public Fortnite. Let's do it now. Now split between well. Well there's pubs for Fortnite but there's non-building and building. So now you've got two communities split on your game now. Both are gonna want changes. Both are gonna want certain special things added to the game. And I'm sure Epic can fulfill the needs of both. But I have a feeling that one group is going to overpower the other. other, 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 other. The idea of what Fortnite Battle Royale is supposed to be has started to fade away. Not because the game is dying or moving too close to the metaverse, no. It's because the game is evolving, and if you're listening to my voice, I want you to know that you're in the middle of one of the greatest transitions in Fortnite history. You are literally witnessing the game evolve into something greater than what it once was, and as a result, there are some growing pains that we've been noticing for the last few years. As the game continues to grow in popularity, it raises some logistical concerns about the future of Fortnite. However, these problems aren't as straightforward as many of you have been led to believe. As we go through this topic, you're going to notice it runs much deeper than two sides of the community being at war with each other. And in order to understand this, we have to remove the delusion that many of you have bought into for the last two seasons. Fortnite's issues with balancing the game isn't a result of comp versus casual. Its root problem begins with its two main BR playstyles, builds and zero builds, the latter of which I used to not be a fan of. It's amazing to see how opinions can change over time. I used to hate the idea of zero builds being a permanent mode. As a matter of fact, when you listen to my old takes, it sounds very reminiscent of a competitive Fortnite player who we've had on this channel recently. So why don't you play Apex? Why don't you play Balorant? Why do you play that shit? Because they're garbage. Hold, this hold on a second. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. This game is awesome because better. of building, though. You know that, right? But hold on a second. This game is and also awesome. Hold on. Hang on. Cyan, hold on a second. Whoever's the leader. Hang on a second. Cyan, or clicks. This game is also awesome because zero builds exists. No. Wait, how the fuck? Yes. And that's the other side of the argument that people can't deny is that Fortnite got the success and the popularity it did because of building. Now, let me tell you the real reason why people enjoy no building mode. Hey, I'm going to be honest. Zero builds, they made zero builds for people like, yeah, old, slow reaction times, and doesn't really know how to play. A lot of bad players, a lot of people who aren't good at building, they said, oh, now the building's out of the game. All these, all these sweats, they don't know what to do now. Y'all don't get it. It's a lot easier for me to kill bad players because y'all are still bad. Mm, okay. okay, so basically yeah. what I, to clarify, you're not good at builds, so you had to switch to zero builds, is what I'm trying to hear. So oh you couldn't, can, so can you, I, you, you couldn't adapt, <laughs> you couldn't adapt to builds, is what I'm trying to hear. Instead of forcing people to learn how to get good at the game for what it was and what it was intended to be, and to learn how to play the way it was meant to be played, now we're going to make an easier mode for people that don't know how to play. I thought zero builds would kill the game. It would rip Fortnite of its true identity and its ability to maintain itself as one of the greatest games of all time. All at the expense of what made it good in the first place. I thought zero builds was for people who couldn't get good at the game and refused to learn how to play real Fortnite. And most importantly, I was concerned about how it would split the player base. Now, with that last one, was I really that wrong? Fast forward to 2024 and the majority of my time is spent playing zero builds, but it's not just me. It looks like there's a good chunk of players that are enjoying it more than builds as well. On many days, zero builds can overtake Battle Royale in terms of player count, but why is this? What is the shift that we're seeing in terms of what people enjoy the most with Fortnite? Quite simply, I think it's fatigue. If you're someone like me who's been playing the game for the last seven years, you don't always feel like the vertical chess match of trying to outmaneuver your opponent in a builds fight. And listen, it's not that builds isn't fun. It's not even that getting good at building doesn't feel rewarding, but it does take an insane amount of effort to keep up with that skill. Not to mention the zero build experience takes an equal amount of skill, especially at higher levels, 
but a different type of skill. The level of understanding you have to have of the map and your ability to position as well as aim very well, all these things have to work in tandem to be an effective Zero Builds player. And quite frankly, the challenge of getting good at something new excites a lot of older Fortnite players. And of course, if you're new to Fortnite, Zero Builds is a far easier place to start than it is for builds. Now here's where things get interesting. When you come to understand this and then you look at it from the perspective of Epic Games, you realize they're in a very awkward position. They now have to create the same gaming experience for two completely different play styles. This is where you run into issues like we had last season. Although the narrative was comp versus casual, when you really look between the lines of what people were upset about, it's actually an issue of builds versus zero builds. I honestly believe that the Fortnite Wrecked meta was designed more for zero builds players than it was builds. Think about all the core features that were added last season, the Nitro, the Doom Fist, the cars, everything was designed in a way to counter building, but not just that, it overcompensated for the amount of skill that good build players had. Now, because everyone was so focused on competitive versus casual play, the idea of builds and zero builds got pushed to the wayside, but last season really Really showed the chink in the armor when it came to Fortnite's design for their game. The Fortnite community has always been split in some way, but this last season showed just how big the divide could get. But here's the crazy part, you guys. The divide isn't just between builds and zero builds players. No, that's where it starts. However, there are multiple sub-factions that are included under both of those modes. Think about it like this. At its core, we can all agree that Fortnite Battle Royale is split between builds and zero builds, but below that, you have Comp versus casual, controller versus KBM, hit scan versus bullet drop, computer versus console, and now even reload versus pubs. When you start analyzing these sub factions, you can start mix and matching them together. For example, are you a competitive zero builds player that plays on controller on PC? If you are, you might have a harder time this season because there's a lack of aim assist. But wait, could you potentially be a competitive builds player on console that uses KBM? Do you feel like you're at a disadvantage because you lack the amount of frames that a PC player can get? Fortnite's biggest problem right now is paradoxically its greatest asset. There are so many different ways to play this game and every single one of them are valid. However, each one creates a unique experience for the people that are playing them, and this causes friction between the different sub-factions. This is also why the idea of what Fortnite is supposed to be and how the game is supposed to be played is starting to fade away because there's just so many different options for players. Different play styles are naturally gonna gravitate towards certain metas, and this is where Fortnite has its biggest issue right now. It's difficult for Epic Games to take into consideration all these different sub-factions while also trying to make a consistent meta for two diametrically opposed play styles. What's even more insane to me is that it took until Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 3 for people to actually start paying attention to this. There were a few ramblings of it in Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 2, but it was really Season 3 that took it to the next level. Early Season 2, you did have some people complaining about the splash damage from the lightning bolt and how it was unfair for zero builds. Both sides of the spectrum were kind of upset, but it was really wrecked that kind of took this issue and extrapolated it even further. The Nitro and Doomfist were blatantly more aggressive ways to counter building. Now, for someone like me who likes to go back and forth between builds and zero builds, and even pubs and reload i enjoy all the different experiences for what they are and i like to adapt to whatever experience is going to give me the most fun for a season if a meta leans heavier on zero builds i'll play that and vice versa with builds the thing that you start to realize when you look at the greater fortnite community and how they respond to this issue is a lot of them either don't lack the maturity enough to understand what it is that's happening or two they don't give themselves the grace to experiment with different game modes and three if you're a competitive player you're not going to want to swap between two different play styles in order to figure out which one's going to work best for you for this season's meta and not because everyone's so frustrated and everything's so chaotic and you've got the immaturity of the player base people start turning and attacking each other rather than understanding what the actual issue is this in turn widens the divide between all the different sub factions now to be fair a lot of you guys this probably isn't a concept that you've had to put much thought into or that you've even heard explained by anybody before think about before you saw this video did anyone really talk about this or explain this concept in this way the great thing is because of this video and the discussion that can be had as a result of it, I think we can start to understand what's really wrong with Fortnite and get a better understanding of how other players are feeling as a result of all these different ways to play. One meta change we can use as an example to talk about this issue is hit scan versus bullet drop. There are a lot of players that want hit scan removed from pubs permanently, and I think a lot of them might actually be zero builds players. And it makes sense because they don't want to be beamed from range when they fall out of the sky or when they're rotating in the open. Now contrast that with build players that like hit scan because they don't want to have to account for bullet drop when building and editing. And here's the thing that's really interesting. When I think about myself and what I like to play specifically, when it comes to OG based modes, I typically remain in build playlists. 
Whether it's Fortnite OG or Fortnite Reload, I tend to play the mode that has builds. Now, when I realized this, I had to ask myself the question why, and what I came to understand is that I don't like being beamed by the hitscan weapons either. The advantage of playing builds is that at least if I get beamed, I can build cover around myself to potentially heal. I can't do that if I'm playing zero builds and out in the open. Not to mention, even some of my more recent games in Zero Builds pubs, it's made me realize that I've been able to get out of a lot of fights because people just don't have the ability to beam me at range. I have another opportunity to run away and regroup because people have a really hard time beaming me the further I am away. However, I also want to make it clear, just because I realize this doesn't mean I don't like hitscan and zero builds either. When I played competitive Fortnite all of Chapter 4, it was primarily zero builds, and that was a hitscan based meta. So now that we understand the dilemma, what's the solution here? If Epic Games can't please everybody with the current model, is there something that could be done to make this more balanced for everyone? Also, is there anything that we as players can do to make this easier on ourselves? First thing I want to point out is something I preach on this channel very often, which is self-accountability. I think having a proper mindset helps us when we have any issues when it comes to Fortnite. We as players need to understand that there are going to be season themes that lean heavier on one meta than another. This is also why I believe Epic has become a bit more aggressive when it comes to nerfs. It's not just a comp versus casual issue, they also need to take into consideration builds versus zero builds. And depending on the season theme, that can be a very difficult thing to do. The rest of the suggestions that I have have to deal with Epic Games and what they need to do moving forward. This is more so an issue on them than the player base, however, having a negative mindset only hurts you personally and not anybody else. The second thing that I think needs to change and the first thing that I think Epic Games needs to do is they need to get more comfortable with making a slightly different BR experience for each game mode. What I mean by that is zero builds and builds should feel completely unique from one another. That doesn't mean that they can't share the same meta, but at their core, their fundamental play styles need to be different and contain different loot pools. For example, build pubs should always have trap slots and hit scan weapons. There are two items that I think would have completely changed the way builds players looked at last season. If Epic Games had to put armor walls and turrets as trap slots in last season, I think it not only would have made the meta more fun, but would have made it more balanced and gave us an immediate counter to the way that the cars were when they were overpowered. Why Epic Games has been afraid to give us item slots up until season four, I will never know, but I'm happy that we at least have armored walls back right now. Next, even though I'm 50-50 on whether I want bullet drop or hit scan and zero builds, maybe a compromise in the middle would be good to where we buff bullet drop to make it less drastic, but still keep that skill gap of having to lead your shots. Zero builds should also exclusively have items that give you instant cover, like porter bunkers, porter forts, and bubble shields. Things to assist you when you're out in the open. Finally, even though I think the core issue with Fortnite is builds versus zero builds, I still think there is a problem with comp versus pubs. Competitive players should not have to deal with all the wacky items made for casual play. Their version of Fortnite should be more bare bones, we should go back to having split loot pools, kind of like we did in Arena. I understand that Fortnite is trying to have a consistent experience between all BR modes. However, at this point, I just don't believe that it's practical. The game is far too large with too many playstyles and preferences. And rather than trying to create one large meta that has to fit every single mode, Fortnite should focus on making the best version of each mode and trying to make a meta fit that. Think of what would objectively make zero builds the most fun and builds and competitive. This doesn't mean that you can't share wacky themes like Marvel or Wrecked between game styles, but there needs to be core fundamental gameplay mechanics that make each mode a more unique experience. Just certain things that don't get removed or touched as often from the game, yet letting each and every game mode breathe and ultimately realizing its full potential for what it is. I feel like if Epic Games took this approach, it would make a lot more players more happy more consistently because everybody would still know what to expect while also knowing that things are going to be shaken up and changed a little bit. Now don't get me wrong, players will still have to adapt and make changes, however, there will at least be a core fundamental baseline for every game mode that doesn't get touched, which gives a certain level of familiarity while also having players looking forward to experience something new from Fortnite, and I think if we go with that approach, everyone will be able to come to a new middle ground and make Fortnite a better game.